BC. This is the 10 p.m. report with Mike Walsh, Dr. Walt Lyons, and Tom Hanneman. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us this Sunday night. Well, the round-the-clock race is over at the Minneapolis Dome Stadium this evening, and the stadium has apparently won. It all started, as you may recall, three days ago when a snow-shoveling job atop the roof turned into a real-life nightmare. A freak accident involving a crane, repair crews, and some snow left a huge tear in one of the fiberglass panels. And that's when the race really began. As the sunlight poured in, the panel hung in tatters, and stadium officials frantically started mapping out plans to get the whole thing repaired in time for Monday night's televised game, the Vikings against Dallas. Well, those plans did work out because today the last piece of the repair puzzle fell into place. Crews reinflated the dome at a record pace and with plenty of time left over. And so, in the early morning hours, as if by magic, the Minneapolis skyline was restored once again. Jim Newman covered today's work at the Metrodome, and here's his report. They started pumping up that missing section of the city skyline at 7.30 this morning. The stadium's powerful ventilating fans pushed with five pounds pressure per square foot. It took an hour to raise the roof. Stadium officials say that was 15 minutes faster than reinflation the last time the dome went down. At mid-morning, cleanup was almost complete. Snow shoveled to the playing field from the roof yesterday was gone. The remaining puddles modeling the artificial turf were being sucked away. Dome authorities said there would be no permanent stains. The only permanent memento of the collapse, or deflation as dome spokesmen prefer to call it, was the clashing patch. The color does not match, since the new panel was originally meant for another dome. Metrodome officials eyeing the deadline for tomorrow night's game sacrificed the color scheme for speed. The new panel is expected to fade over time, though, and blend more closely with the rest of the roof. And the roof, this time, is expected to last. I would think it would be very, very unusual if we would have three years in a row record-breaking uh, weather systems like we've had these past two years. But it can't be ruled out. Um, all I can say is that uh, if it's a given, and it's not necessarily a given, but if it were to be a given, that there's going to be a dome stadium for professional sports in Minnesota. This is the best kind of dome stadium to have. So the up again, down again dome is up again. And with stadium officials expressing confidence, it awaits the next winter storm. With photographer Bob Fishnick, Jim Newman, WCCO Television News, Minneapolis. And with that repair work now completed, there are plenty of sighs of relief here tonight not the least of which come from the ABC television network. It plans to broadcast tomorrow night's game nationwide on ABC Monday Night Football. This is the first time that program will be done from the Humphrey Metrodome, so crews were in early tonight, setting up, generally getting the lay of the land. By the way, this will also be ABC's final Monday night game for this football season. Elsewhere this evening, President Reagan is back at home in the White House following his holiday vacation in California. On his return trip today, Mr. Reagan made a stopover in flood-stricken Louisiana to get a first-hand look at the damage there. On the way in, his plane dipped low for a better look at the flooded fields. And when the president got off the plane, he told residents he has granted the governor's request for federal disaster aid. Mr. Reagan then drove on to Monroe, Louisiana, there to help residents sandbag that town in an effort to block overflowing rivers. Nearly 10,000 people have been forced to flee their homes there. Damages, they say, could reach $200 million dollars and some rivers are not even expected to crest until next week. The search continues tonight in New York City for the suspects who planted a series of bombs which blew up on New Year's Eve. Meanwhile, officials are taking no further chances. They beefed up security at various public buildings similar to those targeted on Friday night. As the crews patrolled the area, investigators searched for clues in the bombings which left three policemen injured. A Puerto Rican terrorist group, FALN, has already claimed responsibilities for those bomb blasts on New Year's Eve. Given the, the, the um, an incredible amount of explosives in each one of these devices, and given the fact that there were two such devices approximately located next to each other in St. Andrew's Plaza, um, would certainly uh, give rise to, to some suggestion that they were certainly indifferent uh, to whether police officers who responded were injured or killed. And New York City police are now asking people to call in with information they might have that could lead to the arrest of suspects. 
And here at home, there was a show of solidarity tonight in the fight against crime. Residents in the Harrison neighborhood of Minneapolis staged a candlelight ceremony honoring the crime prevention program that began there three and a half years ago. When it started, the burglary rate in that neighborhood was twice that of the citywide average. Today, it is only half. The area is now trying for 100% participation in that crime prevention program. So tonight, candles were lit in front of each home already involved. Last week, the United States had glowing words about the progress of possible arms talks with the Soviet Union. But Soviet leaders are now rejecting that claim. They say progress is stalled, and they're blaming it on the U.S.